Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Jetpacks to the Bank. We're here today to, I don't even know what to call this last week, but go over the last week, go over last night, and get you ready for some Sunday night baseball. But first off, Joe, how you doing today? Uh, because of one team in Philly, pretty solid. Because of the other two, they both suck. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, one team's carrying us. Jason Kelsey also, the man, the myth, the legend, rocked the uh, Kobe jersey into uh, the NovaCare today, who which would have been his 42nd birthday. So shout out to Kobe. Uh, rest in peace. But uh, that was cool to see. So the Eagles and uh, Phillies, and the Eagles aren't even in season, or what are uh, keeping the city going right now, which is funny because the Eagles aren't even close to being in season yet. Yeah, but honestly, the Eagles are starting to worry me a little bit. seems like they're having injury after injury in training camp, but uh, we, we can get into that. On oh, the I just mean the funny videos from training. I don't mean like all the stuff you hear. I mean the videos you see online, and the Eagles are great on social media. Yeah, I will say, as bad as teams are being right now, Philadelphia's social media team game is actually pretty strong all around all around the board. I got to give them credit on that. Um, yeah, no well, matter how bad the I, team is. No matter how bad the team is, you can always rely on the social media to sometimes give you a laugh. Yeah, well, no matter how bad the Sixers are, you always have Fiebel. <laughs> that that is true as well. Logs and a very good TikToker. Maybe so. maybe he should worry about uh, playing, but more now more before <laughs> for his Vlogs. Um, but but we'll save that for later today once the inevitable probably happens. But let's get let's get into this Phillies team because I mean it's been a little bit. I, I had a little busy schedule this week, so we haven't been able to do as many recaps this week as usual. And I feel like almost on the last time we were sitting here talking about how it looked like the Phillies turned the corner. They won four straight, and we're going into a pretty important week with the Blue Jays on the schedule, the Braves on the schedule. And, uh, well, we have now dropped five straight. Uh, you lose 11-2 to two on Friday, and then you lose last night's game 5-4, to four, or excuse me, 6-5, to five, thanks to what else but the bullpen. So I know you. I know you've been hot these last two days, Joe. Why don't, why don't you just tell us your overall thoughts about the, the what's going on? I mean, it's just really. I mean, where I normally don't get to the level of Ricky Batalico, but I kind of have been on the same wavelength as Ricky Batalico uh, for the past couple of days, uh, especially in post game. I'm like, yeah, I completely. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm thinking. Yes, <laughs> um, where like, like he's like you just almost go. And then yesterday's game, you were feeling better about it because of we were dealing and you had new bullpen people. And then it was just like, nope, it's not meant to be Uh, where like it's almost like you're just bit this year. It's like when the Midas touches, whatever anybody touches, turns to gold, whatever the Phillies touch turns to crap. Like it's it's it's, it's almost like. You could probably bring in Chapman and all of a sudden he'll start throwing 93 miles per hour and not be able to get it up to 99 and not have as effective of a slider and just have like a 3.9 ERA and you'd be like, huh? Well, well it's, exa- like, it's exactly like, what Ricky Metallica said yesterday on first game <laughs> when he was like, great, now your bullpen has their own pandemic that's spread across the team. Oh yeah, yeah. He had to correct himself from that, yeah, because they got mad at that, and then and then Michael Barkan called it an epidemic. He's like, no, that's not better. Did they uh, get mad at that? Yeah, he corrected himself when it came back on. Yeah, the channel got mad at him saying that. I think. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that. But, didn't, um, well, don't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the yeah the Phillies bullpen. I mean, I don't know. It's you bring in Workman and he has issues. Granted, you shouldn't bring in a guy his first time with the team with first and third and one out like Ricky Vitalico also said. That's not the best welcoming present. See, real quick, I, I don't have an issue if, say, Workman was here. He's been here for three or four days. You're going to bring guys in at that time. It was more the fact no, that he that arrives. Time. Yeah. And more, it was more the fact he arrived that day, probably like three hours before the game. So you know he's not going to have his best stuff already because he's probably jet lagged and all that. I don't know where he was coming from. I don't remember where Boston was. But um, so that, that was the thing there. But that just shows you how desperate this team is. And I failed to mention it, but the Phillies on Saturday morning, or I guess it was Friday night, made a trade for three pitchers. Uh, they got... Uh, they got um, 
Um, blank on the first guy's name. David his Hale. First name. Well, no, no, I know David Hale, the, the Hembray guy. Blank Heath. on his first name. All right, Heath Hembray, David Hale, and then Brandon Workman. Uh, Hembray and Workman come from the Red Sox. Uh, Workman was their closer. Uh, I think Workman's going to come in and be the Phillies closer and try to move Nares to the setup role. Uh, and I assume David Hale and uh, Hembray will get some setup time. We'll get some middle innings. We'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We, we put him in a tough spot yesterday. I'd expect to see, honestly, both Hale and Hembray uh, tonight with Eflin on the mound. You, you figure Eflin will give you about five, well, six innings. Yeah. Well, I also expected to see Hunter since he was warming up, even though he hasn't been good. Like, if he's been here. So if you expected to put anyone in a crappy spot, it probably would have been somebody that's been here, kind of like you said, because he didn't just get off a plane three hours ago. Like, that that would have made more sense to me because he was up again instead of putting in the guy that just showed up. Well, uh, I, was on, I was honestly surprised they went Hunter instead. Excuse me, they went Nair instead of Hunter. I, I thought Hunter would have been the guy to yeah. start the eighth inning. That's a good point, too. Yeah, because he was also up for the eighth inning. So why would you? Hunter hasn't been as great either, but Hector's been way more off, like they said on post game, than Tommy Hunter. They didn't say than Tommy Hunter, but they just talked about how off he's been recently. I would probably give him, honestly, a couple days if you could. It's just that bullpen sucks so much. You can't really afford the luxury of giving one of your relievers a couple mental days. Um, but you might be able to now. Uh, if Hale pitches good in his first outing and some of the guys you have pitch good. And, um, I mean, you might be able to now, but it'll still be a stretch. But I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think it was surprising Hunter didn't come out first. And if he didn't come out first, why wasn't he the guy that came out during the jam rather than someone that just got here? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree to an extent. It's... It's an interesting situation, but I think by um, by that move, it's showing you how desperate the Phillies are. I mean, the Phillies, Girardi already knew what he was getting in Hunter. He already knew what he gets in theirs. And he knew, we, we mentioned it, that you can't, it, we were surprised that he went with the uh, workman there. Well, I, I think for that reason, that's why you're also not going to stretch out three guys that just arrived there in that day. You're going to use the one that you trust the most. And obviously, Workman's the best of the three. So they they trusted him in that situation to get that done because obviously you already know what you got in there. You already know what you got in Hunter. You already know what you got in the rest of the pen, and it, you can't trust him. And I think it was a move of desperation, and unfortunately, it didn't work out last night. Um, I don't think fans should take that on Workman. I think in the long run, he'll be fine. I think it was just a mix of him coming in uh, in a tough situation, one, and then two, obviously – just coming in that day. So I think we got to give him more than just that one time. Yeah, I don't think he explained yeah. it bad on post game either. Uh, he talked about how his curveball was off. Uh, he needs to throw better pitches and stuff. He kind of owned it pretty solidly. So yeah, I he think that that's a pretty, pretty good first impression uh, after a bad first impression pitching wise, like he said himself. Uh, so that's a good first impression to leave on the media like having the own ability because you don't like nobody in Philly likes athletes that try to push the blame in this city so yeah. having that is nice to see in his first outing he also doesn't want to be a normal bullpen guy he basically also said in that i if i go out tomorrow like basically i'm going to be better so that's basically also saying i want the damn ball tomorrow and, 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 and without saying that that's pretty much telling girardi if we get in a situation where i can have the ball give me the damn ball <laughs> i don't care how much i pitch today like, without directly saying that, that's almost saying that, in my opinion. Yeah. So. But I got I got three stats real quick I, I need to read to you. And you, it, you spiked it by mentioning wasting Zach Wheeler's start yesterday after he was dealing. These three stats. Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola combined for a 2.92 combined ERA. Phillies are 5-5 five and five in those games. The Phillies have a losing record in games Bryce Harper hits a home run. And the final one. In the month of August, despite hitting 291 with runners in scoring position, we were 8 and 12. What a wasteful month! And, and these stats are uh, brought. Uh, we were on uh, Corey Sadman's Twitter. He 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 tweeted them. Wait, so what that, did we that, hit with runners in scoring position? That broke up in my mic. In August, we were currently hitting 291 with runners. 291. In scoring position. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I heard... you and you were 8 and 12. Okay. Like, oh, no. Yeah. 
That I, I don't even know what else to say after that. Like I don't know how that happens. No, I'm Noah and Wheeler are to the point where they're both Cole Hamels. Where I'm not like like I'm not like in a good in a way of they're both pitching well, but they're both like Cole Hamels in the year that nobody scored. Or when they did score, the team still lost. And it's like both of them were just, yeah, I can't find a way to get a win. So I, I pitch great, and I just can't get a win. Like, like, like they're both right now what, like that type of guy, and you have to figure it out because obviously Eflin hasn't been as good as we hoped uh, so far coming back. Jake's looked off his last couple outings. Uh, you hope he bounces back. Uh, he seems to have a better head on his shoulders with this uh, coaching staff than the coaching staff prior. But um, we'll see what happens there. And then you still have Howard, who I think they need to take the leash away from a little bit. Uh, So, like, I would have let him finish that inning as one example. Um, Uh, In a nine-inning game, I think he does finish it. But I think Joe Girardi over— I don't care. I think Joe—no, I'm saying I I think I'm agreeing with you. I just think Girardi over— over manages these seven inning games. So in a spot like that, um, in a nine inning game in the fourth inning, I think he leaves him out there because it's seven innings. He overthought it and um, went to the pen. But the other thing is, if you have a pen where you, you got say, go let's go back to the fun days when you have Ryan Mathis and Scott Aaron Bradledge, then you can make that move because you you, yeah, or, you I said Scott Aaron, but he was he was the second lefty. We had J C Romero who pitched great. Um, yeah, you can make that move because you can trust those four guys to get the out of the inning and, and clean it up. But when you have a bullpen of, at the time, before the trades, uh, Cole Irvin, Austin Davis, Hector Naris, Tommy Hunter, uh, whoever else you want to mention, you can't make that move. I don't remember who he brought in for Howard. I don't know if you can remember. But um, uh, it obviously didn't work out that well. And uh, it backfired. But... Story of this year. It's frustrating at this point. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what else. If you have anything else on on these recent struggles or not, but I'm trying to see who we uh, brought in. Well, Parker. no, who we brought in for Howard did fine. It was it was uh, Parker. It was Parker Alvarez got out of the jam, and then Hunter blew it up. Yeah, Hunter blew it up, and then Diola Square before he got DFA he continued to suck. So, uh. Yeah, so he's don't worry about him anymore at least. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean the Phillies at least some things happened. You had uh, Adam Hazley, a lot of people's a uh, guy that they like uh, come back active yesterday. So except for the sad part of that was Jay Bruce then got put on the IL. Um, yeah, we lose a couple but, guys, Bruce and uh, Jose Alvarez going to IL. Um, well, Jose Alvarez was expected. There was no chance he wasn't going on the IL after. Getting drilled by that, no, I, I agree with that he would have been like that would have been ridiculous if he was like, oh no no I'm good no it's all right don't worry about it guys I'll be okay it's like oh okay well like um that's just rough for the Phillies because of lefties you don't have the lefty now um you have Morgan and then whatever the hell Ranger comes back and then you still have Austin Davis in the organization but he's not anything special uh. And then Jojo Romero is a lefty, but mm-hmm. he hasn't pitched yet. And he he did good two years ago in the minors, but struggled last year. So well, no, he he pitched. He struck out the side in his MLB debut. Oh, did he? Okay, I didn't watch. Mm-hmm. I probably didn't watch that game because I missed it. Yeah, yeah he, actually, he looked. Yeah, okay, they actually looked pretty good. good. He looked good in his MLB debut after looking terrible last year in AAA. So that's good to see. <laughs> um, be like it's weird how that happens sometimes, where like guys um have a great year then struggle and trip away then they get called up and they're like oh my god i found it uh and then they keep doing well it's weird how that works sometimes hopefully that happens for him because they that would be huge since uh jose alvarez is out so yeah, no, absolutely they're gonna need him to step up with morgan hopefully ranger suarez can come back soon and uh he's on a good trajectory it sounds like but moving on real quick before we get into tonight's game as i mentioned phillies are on a five game losing streak not looking good, good right now at all. Um, I mean, there's no other way to, no other way around it. You're now sitting at dead last in your division. Um, five game losing streak. Obviously, still got a tough game here against the Braves uh, tonight. So, 
Where are you at with this team? Are you hitting the red button? Is it panic mode? Are you giving up on on World Series playoff chances? Are you still still have hope in, in that sense? Where are you at with this team well, on this current losing streak? Well, about the first one, I never thought we had much of a chance at that. Uh, I mean, if I had to rank this team as a World Series contender, I wouldn't have had them too high coming into the season. So, yeah. um, I with that one, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, looking at that bullpen coming into the season, there's no chance I would have put us as a World Series contender unless if Spencer Howard, Zach Wheeler, I almost called him Zach Nola, and Aaron Nola – all pitched to like ridiculous heights. That's the only way I would have put us as a World Series. All right, so then, all right, where where are you at with the in terms of the season? Phillies currently sit at nine and fourteen. They they currently have. I mean, I'm gonna put the Cardinals over the Phillies because I mean, yeah, if you go by win percentage, they are above the Phillies. The Phillies are currently the second worst team in the National League. Um, so obviously, I, I know it's expanded. The Cardinals are also decent because they're just going back and forth because they haven't played. They're eight and eight. They're just teetering. Like, that's all you have soul. to do. That's all you have yeah. to do is play 500 ball. Phillies can't do it. Um, but you got everyone to climb. Like, obviously, it's expanded playoffs. So you're going to have eight or yeah, eight teams in, in the playoffs. Um, but, I mean, are, are you, where, where are you at with that? And where? how do you think the Phillies rebound? And does it does it start tonight as a transition into tonight's game? Uh, well, the Phillies... Could they still make the playoffs? Yes, but that's because there's an expanded playoff front. So well, is it a- yeah, I'm saying like, where are you at though? Like, do you do you believe like, are you panic mode or are you? If they make up, the, are you if still they high make hope? the playoffs, I think they would make it as one of the last teams, unless if they really get going and the bullpen really gets going and it's not the opposite of the Midas touch as it's been all season, where whoever comes up just doesn't do well, where other bullpens, whoever comes up, it's the exact opposite, uh, where ours has never been like that. So it's been annoying to see uh, that if that changes. And like I said, and like we said, Workman in that outing, it wasn't he was coming off a plane. That's not a good outing to judge off of. If Hale in his first outing, Jojo, uh, who I missed because uh, I wasn't watching that game, but he had a very good outing, like Andrew said. Workman and Hembray, and then Hunter figures it out, Nearest figures it out, then, yeah, you might be able to get into a decent playoff spot. You're not going to be a division winner. There's absolutely no shot in hell, I think, this team's – I don't – unless if they pull a rabbit out of a hat, uh, I don't think they're winning the division. Um, but you might be able to go up in the wild card because there's a few extra wild card teams this year rather than being the worst wild card team, which is pretty crappy and – uh, this expanded playoff. So that's probably the heights. Uh, the low is not making the playoffs because this team's been so putrid in the bullpen. If that continues, you're not going to make it. Um, yeah, so so to me, it sounds like you're hitting the panic button. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think this team's going to do anything. Like if they make the playoffs, they'll make it and it'll be cool. Uh, and then we'll probably go up against a juggernaut and get our asses kicked. <clears throat> I mean, that's probably the future, unless if they really get their pitching in line and not even just their pen now, because you have to get Eflin going and you have to stop being so worried about Spencer Howard. Somebody wrote an article I saw on one of the Phillies writers and let him go because our bullpen stinks. Uh, You can't be putting people in in the fourth inning all the time when he's at 65 pitches or whatever it was. So. It's just because uh, it was a seven inning game. I could care less. Joe Girardi overthinks it more than Gabe Kapler. I mean, like, chill. Okay, so, so again, so you're hitting the panic button on whether this team will make the playoffs. It sounds like is that correct? Yeah, and if they make the playoffs, they're going to be losers anyway because they're going to make it and end up defeating. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you face the Dodgers. You face the Dodgers. Yeah, you're probably facing. You're not. The you're not beating the Dodgers. Um, so let's jump into the night. You got Sunday Night Baseball, um, which I think when obviously the schedule came out, they were hoping. I want to see national television people watch this team. Yeah, I, this is what the, I mean. This is what the city of Philadelphia. I mean, tonight will be the night Zach Eflin like pitches bad, and the bullpens are going to throw like six scoreless innings and and make make us all look crazy as fans. But um, no, we got we got obviously 
another big game. We got seven days left in August here. You're five back of the Braves in the division. So obviously, if you're going to stay hopeful in that, you got to start turning around somewhere. And it's got to start with tonight. I mean, obviously, this past week has been horrendous, uh, terrible, uh, five-game losing streak. But it, it starts with tonight. And maybe you turn it around. You're going up against a veteran in Josh Tomlin, who's 1-0 and with a 2.35 ERA. And then uh, Philly's got Zach Eflin on the mound, who's 0-1 with a 5.14 ERA. So two guys who, I mean, Tomlin's been in the league longer, but Eflin's been around the league for a little bit now. Um, not the best numbers against the Braves. Uh, I was comparing it, or looking at some numbers as always. They got their hitters. Their hitters can hit off Eflin. Surprisingly, he's got control of Freeman. Freeman's only hitting 143 off him. But outside of that, everyone else has some pretty good averages. Um, and then the Phillies against Josh Tomlin. Haven't faced him too much. Most is a Gene Segura with 13 at-bats. He's th- th- sitting 308. But what what are you looking for out of Eflin tonight? I mean, obviously, he's struggled. He's gotten pulled early in most of his starts. Um, I think the one start against the Yankees, maybe he lasted six innings, gave up four runs. Is that what you're kind of looking for tonight? Is just six runs? Get us to get get us through six, about three or four runs. Is that what you want to see out of him? That would be good because ideally, if our offense can keep scoring, I mean, Josh Tomlin, I understand he started the season really well so far this year, and that's good for him as a journeyman pitcher. But I mean, he's a journeyman pitcher also for a reason. I don't think he's going to consistently keep a two three or a so. Eventually, he's a guy that normally plays with hitting the right spots, like the outer parts of the zone, always staying low, getting the double plays, all that good stuff, pitching to contact, letting his defense do his thing. You have to jump on him when he has his good pitches that he leaves over the zone because he doesn't have special stuff. He's a location pitcher. So uh, when you if you can jump on him, then we can be fine. The problem is Eflin right now is pitching differently than he usually does, and maybe it's because, like you were saying before, he's still not fully comfortable yet, so he's trying to strike out more people because he's not feeling like he has as good of his stuff as he should. But I don't. But I feel like he's sometimes over pushing it, like kind of overthrowing at times to go for strikeouts this year, and that's never been him. So I, I've been trying to put my finger on that. Uh, so if he can kind of tone it down more to like that Yankees game where he balanced both ends and get through like six innings and three, four runs, that would be probably good against the Braves. Cause I would think the seventh inning, I mean, I'm not the best at predicting who's going to come in, but I would have to say it would be Hall or Parker because Parker hasn't pitched it'll be yesterday. He might come in or you might let that be Hale's uh, first game since it's just the seventh inning too. So. Yeah, no, I agree. I think he just has to settle down and play his game. I mean, he's got 23 strikeouts in 14 innings. Like, that's just – that's not effluent. But, hey, if that's what he's going to do, that's fine. You just got to manage everything else. Uh, yeah, I'd you like just to can't have him, a 5-5 ERA. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see him get back to his ground ball self, too. I feel like he's got – I don't know the exact percentages, but I feel like his ground ball to fly ball ratio is probably higher than usual. Um, oh. I think he – I was just say the funny thing about that is though who would have thought that Zach Wheeler would be one of the best ground ball pitchers in all of baseball coming into this season, and Zach Eflin will be one of the better graded <laughs> strikeout pitchers. Like, like I'm pretty sure people would have been looking at you like you had six heads if you said that in the off season before the season. No, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I don't know about you. I, I think um, we'll, we'll see what the lineup is with Tomlin. Coming out there today, I'd expect to see uh, Adam Hazley make his first start since coming off the DL. Um, I would think so, yeah. I would like to think JT will be back in there. Uh, I don't know what the when they give the guys off. I don't know what he's going to continue to do with that. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, I do like – I think Scott Kingery is starting to slowly turn a corner. He's starting to hit the ball more. I'm not going to say he's back, but – He's hitting the ball harder, it seems like. Got unlucky on a couple yesterday or Friday. I can't remember which day it was. One was but, yesterday, uh, I think, when Dansby made that diving yeah. snag. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see. I, I hope we get it done tonight. I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say Philly's knock uh knock Tomlin around today. I think I think Eflin's gonna get a six six uh six innings of three run ball. Uh Tomlin's out by the end of the fourth inning. Uh, and then it's gonna be up to the bullpen if they can hold on to the lead. Um I think uh, I'll give the Phillies. 
I don't think he gets swept against the Braves here. So I'll, I'll give the Phillies the benefit of the doubt. I'll say uh, I'll, I'll say a nine to. I'm thinking like a nine to five victory here tonight. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Well, also with rest, I don't think anybody you should have to worry about that because we have off tomorrow. So yeah. if you're worrying about rest, uh, that's an issue because you have a day off. So I think we shouldn't have to worry about anyone in the lineup tonight. But I would say if Eflin can get them through six, they'd be in pretty good shape because now you don't have guys with three hours of showing up and not even knowing who they are on the team yet, really, uh, getting thrown into a situation. They at least had about 24 hours of process where they're at. Um, so plus David Hale knows Atlanta. He freaking started pitching for Atlanta. So that that's pretty comfortable for him. That's why I think it wouldn't be the worst idea to get him in the game in Atlanta as his first start since he's he didn't pitch. I don't know if he pitched in SunTrust. I think he pitched in the old stadium. No, he did pitch in the old stadium. But uh, you still are in a comfortable setting and city. I think that wouldn't be the worst idea. But either way, I like. I think we are good as long as our bullpen holds on. I did say in the video yesterday I wasn't going to make predictions anymore because this team pisses me off. Uh, and it's so hard to make predictions. I like predictions. Uh, so you don't have to give one, but i good predictions. Yeah. Um, I would say it is – I'll just say eight to – Four maybe if we do win because I think we'll have to score at least eight runs. I'm not gonna because I your bullpen's gonna have to. Well, Eflin also I think the pitch well is gonna have to get run support so he can settle into a game and finally get his confidence up. I think that would also be best for him because I think the best way to get his confidence up is if we can jump out early on Tomlin kind of like you were hitting at, and then Eflin can kind of just cruise more to get his, his feeling back for his pitches and not feel any pressure because we're already up like four or five, nothing or whatever. So if he gives up a solo shot, you're still up five to one. So then he can feel a little bit more looser where he seems a little bit more tension driven and overthrowing, like I said, at times this year. So uh, I would say eight to four, because I think we need to jump out early here, kind of like you were hinting at as well. Sounds good to me. Hopefully we get a Phillies win, start to turn the corner. Um, I don't know if you have anything else before we wrap it up here. And any final thoughts? I'll leave. Well, you we with did this. forget to say again. Uh, if you like what you're listening to, like, comment, and subscribe because I'm a stupid idiot and forget to say that at the beginning of stuff all the time. So do that if you like what you're watching. <laughs> yes, agreed. Uh, please help us out there. Comment. Uh, let us know any suggestions, anything you want us to talk about. Um, I'll leave you with this. Uh, breaking news, according to Bob uh, Nightingale, uh, former Philly and fan favorite around baseball. Oh, you saw that. Hunter Pence has been uh, designated for assignment. He, I mean, he's struggling. He's sitting below 100. So I'm not saying I'm too surprised. But uh, yeah. it's always hey, unfortunate. With our club. Yeah, right. It's always unfortunate to see guys you like ha- that happen too. So we'll see if he gets a second chance with a different team. But that's all I got. I don't know about you. Hopefully we get another Phillies win. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you have for us, final thought was? Well, it, my final thought is it's great to see, uh, other than last game, uh, Noah this year is pitching well, excluding his last start, but everybody has a bad start. Every great pitcher has a bad two to three starts in a season. So that was just one of them. And then Wheeler hasn't even had that yet, so that's been helpful. And so it's great to see those guys continue to do well. Now we just need Eflin and guys like Jake to rebound. So I think that will happen hopefully because it seems like with this staff with the starting pitchers we're getting the message across a little bit where with the relievers for some reason it's like it's like goes here and then it's out the other ear I I, I don't know what the difference is there but um, that's why I feel good things about Howard as he gets better and showed me more signs in that game of maturity so my final thought is I think our rotation is good to start carrying us more as time goes on, especially because of Howard. Even if Arietta only does solid, I think Howard's going to take a more step forward to go five innings at least. So then your rotation is going to take a bigger step. And if Arietta can even just give up four runs but go six, that's fine too. So uh, I think that's what we're going to see going forward, and that's what's really going to help us. 
And I also think if there's still some issues, Matt Glantech will probably add more people because Joe Girardi will probably have another press conference where he's like, well, you know, uh, I just kind of deal with the people that I'm given and I don't and basically just keep talking in a tone where you can tell blatantly that he doesn't like the people he's given. <laughs> hey, you could blatantly tell that he was saying, no, 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 no. I don't. Even though he said, I just have to manage the people I'm giving the Jim Salisbury. You could tell that was please trade for somebody. Like, like, and then we did. So I well, see no, he this, physically called him out. He said, that's all Matt to get me play, bringing guys. Yeah, yeah. He, he, said, he didn't I did. He flat out said it. Well, no, but then when Jim, I'm saying when Jim Salisbury asked the question, do you need help? He just said, I'm going to manage the guys that, that are given to me after that question. Mm. Um, but I think that's why he might save, if they're able to figure this out and they get on a run, then Joe Girardi might have honestly just saved going tax aid. Because if the Phillies get on a run because of our pen and our rotation starts going and we actually look solid and don't do what I was saying and get a bottom playoff spot and actually get a like a top wild card spot because we go on a run and have like the are in one of the better positions there, then Joe Girardi might be credited for saving Mac Lente by literally calling him out and making him actually make trades. Uh, that's another closing thought that I just thought of, honestly, as we were talking about that. So. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, if the Phillies don't make the playoffs, I think Clintex done. Oh, no, he is. Uh, we'll, we'll see We'll see where we go from here. Hopefully it starts to turn the corner. Hopefully we can start being more positive about this team. But until until we see a change, I mean, you can't, there's not much positive outside the offense to talk about and Nola and Wheeler. But, again, if you like what you got, like, subscribe. And always, always give us comments, feedback, and what do you want us to talk about in future episodes. Uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Jet, Pat, Jet Packs to the Bank. For Joe and Andrew, have a great day. Go Phillies, and hopefully we get a Sunday Night Baseball win on national television. Yep.